All right, so now time to take a look at this uh, big microscope part of the Opgen Argus system. Uh, I'll just fire it up. I've taken a lot of the panels off just to reduce the uh, size and bulk a bit. It's a nice uh, graphic display. It's quite a lot of burning on this this uh, vacuum fluorescent display. Fairly loud fans. It takes about a good few minutes to boot up. It's uh, based on Linux. It looks like there's a RAID controller in there as well. So nothing really uh, interesting happening. I, I did get this to boot to the point of asking for a password for the um, software at one point and it actually re-zeroed the, uh, these XY axes, but it's not doing it now. I think maybe I've perhaps left something unplugged when I uh, did the, some initial disassembly, but um, so it wasn't anything particularly interesting. But I have got some images which I'll uh, put up just to show the sort of things it uh, produces. Down here there's just an interlock switch and a locking solenoid for that uh, front flat to access the... Uh, this part over here. So taking a general look around here, in here we've got a PC power supply and another secondary power supply for the motors and everything presumably. Down in here there's a um, solid state relay that controls the secondary power supply from the PC power supply because they use the uh, PC on off switch on here. There's a little, um, little vacuum pressing display. Uh, I think this must have um, the, that opt-in image pre-programmed into the, into the display because that comes on as soon as it powers up. So over here we've got a uh, 532 nanometer green laser with a uh, fiber optic output on an SMA connector. We've got the laser driver here, PC motherboard in here with a bunch of uh, various cards. This grey cable is coming from the camera or down here which is going to have all the custom stuff for this instrument. And on the left hand side this is something like a shock vibration mount. Optical assembly back here, the, uh, the camera down here. The laser comes in on a fibre up at the top. And there's a stepper motor here which is probably going to be for focus. I'm not sure if there's any like a wheel to select different um, filters on this unit. Can't immediately see anything. Uh, there's a barcode reader up here to read the code off the plate. So it looks like there's a space for three. And under here we can see quite a large microscope objective with uh, there's a little oil channel down it. So as we saw earlier on the oil dispenser, this needs oil between the uh, objective and the subject. So that's probably going to be a fairly high magnification microscope. Um, we've got this XY motion platform. We've got interesting detail. There's some uh, some quite high precision slides here. Ico Japan. There's an interesting detail of how the um, the motor sled is coupled onto this. There's two sort of flat pieces of metal. So that's clearly designed to provide some compliance in this direction, so that the motor sled doesn't put any force onto the any sort of lateral force onto the slides. So, and the same on this axis here. And this metal block just couples the whole XY slide to the um, assembly that all these uh, slides go in. Now there's one really interesting detail here which I was rather puzzled by. Um, I did put out uh, put something out on Twitter and they got, got the response for that. Basically the fibre from the laser up to the head goes through sort of several turns and goes through this assembly which has got a motor with an offset weight on it. So what this does is it actually shakes the fiber. I thought, you know, that was a very weird thing. But apparently this is to uh, reduce speckle because of the uh, coherence of the laser beam. You know, they want the precise wavelength, but they don't need the coherent thing. So that apparently by shaking the fiber, you, you reduce that speckle, which I'm imagining is probably something to do with relativity and something similar to the way that ring laser gyros work or something that's still uh, a little bit puzzled as to how shaking a fibre can actually affect light going through it but I'm sure there'll be some 
people that know more about physics in the comments to uh, explain more about that, but we'll try and get the laser fired up and um, see if we can see the effect of that. Uh, back here, just some uh, PC connectors, um, doing some rather interesting uh, cable tie uh, work to secure the uh, USB connector into the coupler to go on the back. And a rather nice solid sort of machine chunk of aluminium forming the bezel that this uh, display and switch is mounted on. So just the sort of overkill we like to see on this sort of gear. Right, these boards in here are mounted on trays that slide out, so you do need to unplug all the cables. Once you've done that, they actually slide out quite easily. So this slides out to a real a uh, fairly large dual processor sort of server motherboard. Can you assume they do that because of the image processing needed on this isn't really doing anything else other than uh, that that needs any significant amount of um, processing power and um, this is the camera interface cards made by photometrics or the camera manufacturer I'm not sure if this is something standard like camera link or something more proprietary I have to try and find some information on that photometrics are quite wide well-known camera manufacturers hopefully you can find some uh, info and drivers on this thing and actually get it running and of course being high-end lab, lab equipment even the um, PCI card slots are held down with uh, socket head allen screws rather than normal screws there's just a custom plate here for just passing through all these power connectors just to get everything to come out of the, um, the same side to, to allow the whole assembly to slide out beneath this plate there's uh, pair of hard disks the other cards seem fairly generic I can't actually see any makers names on any of them RAID hard disk controller dual serial port and graphics and this is an Intel S5520HC server board and the drives are a Seagate Barracuda one and a half terabytes each 7200 RPMs and just in case you're wondering what sort of PC power supply they use in a $300,000 bit of kit. This is a Corsair TX850. Right down here we've got the uh, sort of custom board that handles all the other stuff. Um, this looks like it's fairly underused. I suspect it's probably a board designed for multiple products. Quite a few unused connectors. So these blue ribs at the front, these are for the three stepper motors. And there's a few assorted connectors going down the side. The power connector there from the power supply. So this board looks little more than a ridiculously over-the-top stepper motor driver. We've got 12 power op amps back there. These are potential outputs for up to six stepper motors. They're only actually using three of them. Some of these have got relays for um, the interlock so that when the cover's open, it physically disconnects the stepper motor outputs, which seems a little bit uh, overkill. Massive great heatsink. Altera Cyclone FPGA, analog devices, digital signal processor. This down here is a Cypress USB 2 interface. Um, there's a bunch of sort of like solenoid drivers for like driving various valves and so on, and some inputs for limit switches and so on. Um, these steppers do have encoders on them, but I, I'm really puzzled as to why you know why they've got these power op amps here. Presumably that's some sort of programmable current source for the motors. I don't know if they're maybe even doing trying to do some um, Sort of weird analog micro stepping type of deal, I don't know, but I mean, this is just the most ridiculous stepper motor driver I've ever seen. I mean, if you're building a piece of kit like this, why would you not just buy off the shelf driver either modules or ICs? It just I can't understand why you do that. I mean, I don't know, maybe they want a sort of super smooth movement, but even so, you'd think you'd move it and then take the pictures, you wouldn't try sort of using the camera while the thing's on the move. So I don't quite understand why they'd need that level of um, control over it. it. Does seem overkill. I'd be interested to why to know you know why you'd use something this complex for what is basically controlling um, three step motors and a few um, output. You know, there's like a latch solenoid for the cover and a few other odds and ends, but there's really not very much. And under the fan bracket, we've got a load of uh, 10 bit uh, D2A converters driving those uh, op amps. So, a couple of 500k sound laser D's up here, which is probably for some sort of general input stuff. Some of these connectors that probably aren't actually used in this uh, product. 
Uh, this is another little board which was next to the laser driver. So this is the actual laser module and the driver board. I'm sure this driver board will be from the laser manufacturer. And there's only four connections to this, so hopefully that shouldn't be too hard to figure out to get this uh, fired up. Um, there's just one or two other little connectors here. There's a Altera CPLD on here, and there's just I think one or two odd little bit of, bits of I/O on here, but nothing uh, particularly uh, interesting. Okay, so this is the optical block. We've got the uh, camera over here. This is the where the laser comes in through this fiber, and I think there's a shutter mechanism. There's probably some other optics to get the beam the right shape, and then there's, there's a whole vertical section. A mirror down here and some sort of mirror beam splitter arrangement to fire the laser up towards the uh, subject and let me just see the uh, back of the objective this vertical step I'm sure that's going to be for some something like a focus adjustment and yeah it looks like that stepper sort of presses up, up, upwards onto this uh, assembly on the right to uh, adjust the distance so here's the camera, this is a Photometrics Cool Snap EZ or EZ. Maybe about a half inch sensor by the looks of it. But one interesting little detail on here, it's got this weight attached to it. Or it's mounted on this on this face. I wonder if maybe without this it's there's some like vibrational resonance or something in this direction. So they've just put this sort of big chunk of uh, weight onto it. This is really hard, this is like over half a kilo this. I don't know what this is made of, but it's uh, seriously heavy, but there's, you know, it literally doesn't attach to anything else. Its only function could be as a as a weight, so I can only assume it's a, um, either anti-vibration or maybe damping so that when the focus moves it's ready to take a photo more more quickly than it might otherwise be, but uh, I've not seen anything like that before. Single power data connector to that PCI card, expose out, so that's probably a trigger. And that's about it. Power switch. Not quite sure why you'd bother having a power switch on something like this. Because obviously that'd be tethered to the PC and powered from that. Seems a little bit pointless having a separate power switch on it. Excuse all the noise. We've got some rather noisy parakeets that have taken up residence next door. And this is the port that it looks through. And you can see this, um, this looks like it's got a filter on it. Get some sort of quite it's pretty hard to see. You can see there's some fairly distinct colour reflections. And this is the filter, which is marked 562, so that's pretty many 562 um, nanometer, which is only 30 nanometers away from the 532 laser. Quite a narrow band to discriminate the um, the fluorescence of the stuff you're trying to detect versus the uh, the laser that's uh, eliminating it. And this is the um, laser assembly, so we've got the SMA connector here that the light comes in. There's uh, this sort of shutter assembly and there's another narrowband filter here. So this is probably going to be the 532 to make sure that only the uh, exact wavelength that they're interested in comes through from the uh, laser. And yeah, this is Maxline laser filter 532. And it looks, looking through it, it looks extremely dim, so it's probably a yeah, very, very narrow band. If we just put these side by side, the colour probably won't come out on the camera. The um, the camera filter does look slightly lighter shade of green as you'd expect, but uh, as you can see there's a lot more attenuation on the um, the laser filter on the left. Okay, I detached this from a bit more of the uh, aluminium because it was just so big and heavy, it was quite cumbersome. Um, one thing I noticed, if I shine some light down there, this is the uh, laser port. It looks like there's some additional colour filtering. I suspect that's probably a dichroic beam splitter just to preserve the maximum amount of, sort of light through the system. Now I was thinking this might be quite an interesting sort of setup to do things like um, sort of tiled imaging of a uh, semiconductor die or something but it's just so big and cumbersome I'm really not sure if it's, it's worth the effort. Okay so it's nice and easy to get this laser work. All it needed was a 24 volt supply, there's no interlocks, no control stuff uh, or anything. It takes about a minute or so to come on because it waits until the um, internal temperature is stabilised. There'll be temperature control on the um, probably the laser cavity, maybe the KTP crystal and the um, laser diode. This puts out about 50 milliwatts, 532 green, and so this assembly focuses it down. And if you look at these filters, this is the, uh, the camera filter. Which you as you'd expect looks like complete blackout and doesn't let anything at all through at 562 nanometers. 
whereas the uh, laser filter has yeah, almost zero effect as you'd expect because the laser itself is fairly narrow band. Let's see if we can see any effect to this uh, motor that jiggles the fibre up and down. So if we're looking at the uh, output we can see a bit of speckle in there. Turn the jiggler on and it becomes a lot cleaner. There's a, still a little bit of speckle but nowhere near as much. Okay, a bit more. Actually, the, the motor speed doesn't seem to have a huge effect on the amount of despeckling, so it's probably the uh, just the amount of weight and yeah the amplitude of the motion determines the amount of despeckle, and obviously there's going to be a frequency component because of the rotation of the motor. And unfortunately, the cover on this laser looks like it's glued or sealed down, so uh, as it's a working unit with a fairly low number of valves on it, I'm not going to uh, break that. Just keep it as a working unit. Now, unfortunately, I've not been able to get this camera working. I did find some drivers, tried it in a couple of uh, window systems, but neither of them could actually find the camera, so might, maybe there is a, a problem with this. Control board here with a uh, Freescale XC56, which I think is a DSP from memory. Batmail flash chips for firmware. Actually, I'm not seeing any RAM on there. I think this is an LVDS. Um, driver for the interface, some power supply stuff and the front, this is the uh, CCD assembly I'm pretty sure this is a, um, a cooled camera, I think there's a Peltier element here uh, this board doesn't seem to want to come out, I think there might be some heatsink goop or something in there but there's uh, sort of two sort of big wires marked red and black which would be for the cooler mounted underneath here a couple of uh, bags of silica gel and there's a glass sort of front with a gasket around so this is obviously to uh, keep this area dry to avoid condensation but yeah, this isn't quite the extreme that we saw on the Spectral Instruments camera a while ago, which actually had a like, full vacuum chamber. It's just a, a sort of sealed enclosure and avoid um, condensation, but not sort of extreme cooling. Right, I've had a try setting this up um, with my DLSR just to get some idea of the magnification. Obviously, without all the stage and adjustments, it's quite a fiddle, but um, just sort of trying to take a photo of a chip, the magnification, because it's only a 60x, it's not actually great. So, I don't think there's any real benefit in trying to keep this thing as a working XY stage. Also, you know, it, the um, focus distance is extremely close, so sort of trying to probe chips, you'd have to sort of depackage it and get all the stuff around the outside because because of the shape of the lens so to be honest I think with the size and general hassle I don't think it's uh, worth trying to preserve this as a useful thing so it's not uh... so for any microscope aficionados this is actually objective uh, made by Nikon no doubt very expensive but being only 60x and uh, needing oil it's possibly of limited interest this uh, I will be sticking this on eBay in case anyone's interested it's on this uh, little slidey precision slide mount um, instantly my eBay username is the same as the YouTube channel name so a few bits out of this will probably be going up over the next uh, week or two so here are some of the images that I've pulled off the discs on this thing I've no idea what these mean some of them seem to have some sort of coloring on them um, where the file names look like something obvious I've just Put that as a caption on the picture but i've no clue what these are supposed to mean what you're supposed to do with them interpret, interpret them if anyone uh, has used this sort of system and has any clue about this please uh, add it to the comments so we can uh, figure out what uh, what this thing's actually doing and uh, how it makes use of these uh, squiggly wormy pictures